In the military, there's a group that they're called Navy SEALs. And I've been studying them, and I've been watching documentary on them. And I'm going to tell you, if the body of Christ would begin to operate like these guys operate, we will begin to see such a manifestation of the power of God that hasn't been seen. You have guys that come together from all over, from all different branches of the military. They go through six months of the most intense training that's ever been put together. Literally six months. They have a week, a whole week called Hell Week. Amen? Amen. We, we face those hell days every day because the enemy is constantly at us. But they go through a whole week where there's sleep deprivation. That means you don't sleep for a whole week. All you're doing is constantly training, constantly going through different scenarios in preparation for what is to come. They have now, I believe, is 10 SEAL teams. 200, I mean 2,500 different men that go out on a mission daily. See, you don't know it, but they're on a mission every day. You only hear about some of the stuff that they do. But these are men that are given an order and they follow it. They don't deviate from that order because they understand if I deviate, somebody can die. I don't think everybody got that. Amen. They honor those that have been appointed over them. They don't, they don't try to make their own plan. They know that they have to fulfill the mission. Now, while on that mission, there's a leader. They get the orders from on high, and there's one person that leads that group. Pastor Rochelle likes to say it like this. One chief and the rest are Indians. We can't all operate as chiefs. So there's one chief that leads this military force that's going out. And it could be one of the most elite ones, the SEAL Team 6. They, they have one chief that leads them out. Now they get orders from their commanders. They get intel. They get specifics. Somebody has gone out and scoped the land. They scoped the enemy. They know what time they move, what, where they go, how things happen. And then that order is given to that team. And the one leader receives it and gives it out. And they follow it. They don't try to follow their own way. We do that in the church. The pastor, the apostle, whoever leads the church gives an order. But yet everybody tries to do it their own way. Well, I don't agree. I don't like how he does things. I, I, I don't understand. Why is he dressed in camouflage? You know, shouldn't he have a tie? Why do they start at this time? Why do they sing songs the way they sing? Why are they talking about cutting off the enemy's head and eating it for breakfast? I, I just don't understand that. What happened to soon and very soon? Peace in the valley. What happened to those songs? Nothing's happened to them. We just don't sing them here. Nothing's happened. That's a foundation that was established. But we honor those that used to sing those songs because they set a foundation for us. Amen? Amen. So they don't get kicked to the curb, but I'm going to tell you honestly, if you were to start singing that song, I don't know if I, if I could stay in that time of worship because I'm just a little different, just a little bit. Not a whole lot of different. Heather, keep them eyes down. See, we need to understand that when that call is made, when that, when that general, the commander gives an order, and that call is made, you have a choice. You can either answer the call, you can walk away from the call. In the military, you don't have a whole lot of choices. See, that's the issue in the body of Christ. We give too many choices. We want to hear opinions. Why? Why? If you have ever been in the military, I want you to raise your hand. Is it okay for you to break orders? 
Is it Paul? When orders are given, they execute. They go do what they've been told. They don't try to, well, that doesn't sound right. They answer the call. When Navy SEALs are out and, you know, they may be with their family, if their cell phone goes off, it's not like they hit delete or hit ignore. They answer the call. And they know. Here's the other thing I want to tell you. They counted the cost. They counted the cost to even become a Navy SEAL. They understand the process that they're about to face. They understand, look, this can cost me everything. It cost Jesus everything. See, the Navy SEALs ain't doing nothing that God hasn't already done. They're just copying God. When are we going to copy God? They lay down their lives for the sake of the other. They're willing to take fire for the others. I was watching one of the documentaries and they were talking about the snipers and all of a sudden there's three on top of a roof. And they're in, uh, I think it was called Ram Ramad? Ramadi. Ramadi. So they're all of a sudden, they're on the roof, three guys, and they're, take, they're shooting to help their other partners that are on the ground. Well, all of a sudden, one of the bad guys, and we'll just call them bad guys, uh, they throw a grenade up on top of the roof. And the closest guy to the stairs, listen to me, please listen to me. The closest guy to the stairs doesn't take off running. He jumps on the grenade and saves the other two. How many of us are so quick to just take down the stairs? We're not, we don't want to take the fire. We don't want to be sacrificed. We don't want to intercede. It's kind of quiet in this Holy Ghost field church. You know, we have to understand that at times, things happen. At times, there's a grenade that goes out. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to be willing to take the hit for me? You can throw it, I'll catch it. Are you willing, if a grenade is thrown, to say, hey, I'm going to lay my life down for my leader. Are you willing to lay down your life for Christ? Maybe laying down your life is not complaining no more. Maybe it's not gossiping. Maybe it's not talking about your pastors. Maybe it's not talking about other churches. Are you willing to just keep your mouth shut and pray? And jump on a grenade and said, I'll take this one for the team. I want you to process that. I want you to take time out and just think about that. What would you do? What are you willing to do to see this city changed? You see somebody who was just praying for offering. And she began to understand what God is doing in this place. She began to weep. Are you weeping for this city? Or are you trying to be on the next bus out? I told y'all last week that I told a, a minister that's been here for a long time. Go. If you don't like Lawton, I don't need you in Lawton. I'll tell you right now, I've talked to my sister Tina. You know I was going to put you on blast, I brought that up. And I told her, because she loves Cali, all right? She loves California. And I told her, you either love our city or you don't. That, I mean, that's, that's black and white. You either love Lawton or you don't. If you don't love Lawton, if you're not willing to die for the city, then find where God wants you to be. But if you're here, that God has a purpose for you to be in this city. Amen. Right. 
And He wants you to do something about it. Amen? Amen. We need to get to the place like they do. They honor authority. They don't question it. They may not understand it. I'm going to tell you one of the biggest ones. Pastor Jesus. He doesn't understand everything I do. He, he doesn't. Pastor Rochelle doesn't understand everything I do. But they honor me and they submit to authority. Honor is the currency of heaven. And I'm going to prove it to you today according to Scripture. Because people ask me, so is honor, is that, explain that. Honor is the currency of heaven. See, when we hear currency, the first thing we think, oh, if I honor you, I'm going to get money. But it's so much more with God. It's so much more than just money that God wants to place in your life. Let me tell you, I'll give you an example. I'm going to testify. Can I testify? Yes. My sister, Leah. She, I made a phone call and asked her to go with us to Louisiana. Like most of y'all, if I call you on a, to go on a trip, you're going to say yes. You haven't counted the cost. You just wanted to go for a ride. So she said yes, and then 18 times she's tried to get out of it. She didn't call me. But I knew I had heard from the Lord to call her to go. So she goes. Because she honored what I asked her to do, God has transformed her life. Amen. She has gotten revelation just on a trip. I didn't reach back there because she sat in the back next to Pastora. I didn't reach back there and lay hands on her. I didn't do anything but just answer the questions that she asked. I got wisdom from God and released what God was saying. She gets filled with the Holy Ghost. The same thing she was questioning in the truck. Am I right? Only five people get excited. It's a big thing for me. When you get a hardcore Pawnee Baptist and all of a sudden nobody touches her like we think it has to be done because we have to go through all these steps, rituals, religiosity, traditionalism for somebody to get touched and filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Why can't God just be God and do it however He wants to? And we'd be okay with that. See, he's the general of this army. It's not you and it's not me. we got to get to the place of just being obedient to however he wants to do it. She's sitting out on a piece of property with sweet potatoes all over the place. 160 acres covered with sweet potato. And she gets filled with the Holy Ghost. Did anybody touch you? Nobody touched her. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. That's not how it happens in church. Yeah, but that's how it happened in heaven. And I'm okay with it. I don't need to take credit. See, that's the thing. We want credit. We were the sniper on the roof and we took the shot and it killed whoever. No. No. There was intel that came from the top. And you just followed orders. And God used you. That's it. That's it. We've got to honor what God wants done. We've got to honor the ones that God has placed over us. We've got to honor the fact that Jesus interceded for us to be united. Amen. I'm going to tell you, Pastor Rochelle, I thought she was going to preach my message. I'm like, don't you go there, woman. Amen. The Bible says, many are called, but a few are chosen. Amen. Let me give you that scripture in Matthew chapter 22. And in the Passion Translation, it says it like this. Listen, for everyone 
is invited to enter in, but few respond in excellence. I love that, man. Because we're trying to do stuff and not realize that it's not excellent in the eyes of God. See, excellent is not perfect. You have a preconceived idea that when we say excellence, that means it's got to be perfect. Excellence is pleasing God. And you know when you please God. You know it. You know if you're half-stepping in what God has chosen you to do. It's time we answer the call. And it's time that we respond at a level of excellence. We're all called to fulfill an assignment given to us by the great commander. But only few have chosen to answer that call. Jesus had an assignment to fill. Go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20. And I'm going to read verses 25 through 28. And it says this. Jesus, knowing their thoughts. So you think Jesus doesn't know what you're thinking right now? He does. And it's being recorded. And it's in a book called Remembrance. Because He remembers what you are saying and what you're thinking. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, called them to His side and said, Kings and those with great authority in this world rule oppressively over their subjects like tyrants. But this is not your calling. You will lead by a complete different model. See, we're trying to do it the way the Pharisees and the Sadducees did it. If you study your Bible, you'll find out how they did everything under the law. How it was by rule, by demand. Amen? But see, when I read that scripture, I understand that I can't do that. I got to be willing to pour into lives and let them be who God called them to be with the gifting that's in them. Teach them how to have a character that can sustain that gift. Amen? The greatest model, the greatest one among, among you will live as the one who is called to serve others. Because the greatest honor and authority is reserved for the one with the heart of a servant. Y'all got to get that scripture. You want honor? You want authority? Then be the greatest servant. Learn to serve. Submit yourself. Humble yourself. You want your ministry? You want to be able to do what you sense and you have such a passion to do? Then put your hands to somebody else's plow. And be willing to work that ground. Be willing to sweat. Be willing to toil. Be willing to get up early in the morning. Be willing to go to bed late at night. Interceding for that ministry. For that leader of that house. And you will see yours come to fruition. For even the Son of Man did not come expecting to be served. <laughs> Boy, that should speak to a lot of people. But even the Son of Man did not come expecting to be served by everyone, but to serve everyone and to give His life in exchange for the salvation of many. Are you willing to lay your life down for many? Are you willing to say, you know what, God? It's no longer about me. We say it, but we don't demonstrate it. And it's time that we start demonstrating it. And our actions speak louder than our words. Because I can tell Max, Max, I love you. Like we do in church. Everybody loves everybody. But yet, they don't understand, are you willing to lay your life down for Max? Have you counted the cost of that four-letter word, love? See, Jesus gave us the perfect demonstration 
of what, how we should demonstrate love. That he laid down his life. And he didn't even deserve to. We did. So choose your words wisely when you go and you tell somebody, I love you. Or I love this truck. Or I love my house. I've been checking my words when it comes to that because I, I said at one time, I love my new truck. And quickly, I repented because I'm not going to die for that truck. But see, I'm telling you here today that I love each and every one of you because I will lay my life down for you. The fact that I get up early in the morning to come and minister the Word means I lay down my life for you. The fact that I get up and intercede in the middle of the night for you, for your promises to come to pass, for you to grow, for you to develop. The fact that I stay before God so that I can hear wise counsel from God. Tap into the Holy Ghost so I don't give you my thoughts because I know you wouldn't like what I think of you. But the love of God has infused me. So if it's infused me, i got to give it to you. And I want to. I don't have to, but I want to. I desire to love you like Jesus loved you. To lay my life down for you. To get on that grenade and say, I won't let you die because I know you have your mission. I know you have a purpose. I know you have a destiny. I know God's not through with you, so I'll take the hit for you. Are we willing to do the same? I just want you to ask yourself, are you being a clear representation of Jesus Christ? See, the apostles in the first century church did that. They laid their lives down. It was all about ministering the gospel. I know some of you may think, well, I don't understand why there's chairs empty in this church. Well, why don't you ask yourself that? Why are the chairs empty in this church? Maybe it was you that was supposed to bring five people, one person. But you said, no, I'm not going to talk to them about the Lord. That's being recorded in your book. Guys, the Bible says if you're ashamed of Him before many, He will be ashamed of you before the Father. I don't want Jesus to be ashamed of me. I want Him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let's not just stop at good. Let's not just stop at well done. Let's hear God say faithful servant. Because when you're faithful with small, He'll give you the multitude. Amen? Amen. So it goes on to say in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. For the greatest love of all is love that sacrifices his life for his friends. See, my dad used to say this to me. He said, Ray, you'll never have friends. And I, I believe that because anything my dad said, I believed. He said, Ray, you won't have many friends. And I asked him why. He said, because a friend is like a dollar in your pocket. When your pocket is broken, there goes your dollar and your friend. When the money is gone, who's going to stay around me? And I lived that for so many years. I didn't get close to anybody. That's why I'm telling you. I'm being transparent. I'm an open book before you guys. That's why I didn't like people. I couldn't stand you. I'd rather punch you in your face and then keep going. That's how I operated because my dad said, don't get close to anybody. They're going to turn their backs on you. And he was the first one that did it. So we have to understand that's not what Jesus said. Jesus calls you his friend. Listen to that. You are a friend of Jesus. So since you are a friend of Jesus, and Jesus calls you his friend, and he's laid his life down for you, 
When are you going to be his friend and lay your life down for him? When? It's time for us to quit playing games. There's people that are hurting out there. Hurting. I go to one of the biggest stores here called Walmart. And I just sit and I watch people. I mean, I walk fast and watch people. Let me say that because I don't sit. But I watch people and I process people. And God shows me different things when I see people. And, as long, and, and when God tells me to pray for somebody, I go pray for them. I don't hesitate. See, we heard a song today by Pastor Karina, and it talked about many nations, right? And they're going to, how does that song go? Many nations, hands, chain, over their head. That's why they sing. I, I just, I'm just blessed to have them singing. That's all I can say. I don't know about y'all, but if nobody noticed, I'm going to tell you what picture I got. When we were up, when we had all the ones that were up here, I think there was about five or six of them, the nations were right in front of you. And then the Lord, and look, I don't know all the songs that they're going to sing before they sing them. I'm just letting y'all know that. It's not like me and Pastor Rochelle sit down and say, hey, look, I'm going to preach on kingdom seals, talking about the military. I did tell them to wear their BDU shirts, but I didn't know. And then all of a sudden, she starts singing, people get ready. All right? And it, it's a prophetic warning song. And I get pumped. It, it's like I got a shot of Holy Ghost steroids. Okay, I just do. And but I didn't know what Pastor Karina was going to sing. But yet God showed us a picture before she sang it. And all of a sudden the Lord told me tell them to raise their hands in surrender. The chains. Ain't that a part of the songs you raise your hands up? God is showing us a picture prophetically of what he wants to do. You had people that came up and literally surrendered to God and chains were fell off. Burdens, challenges, issues, the past fell off of them. We should rejoice when even one comes up. Because all of heaven is rejoicing. But what are we doing here? As a body that gets to see something visual of the Miracle signs and wonders of God. How many of you honestly, truly rejoiced when you seen John Van Oy get out of a wheelchair and walk up here without his walker? Did you really rejoice within you? Understand, he was in bondage to a wheelchair. And he didn't even have the strength to roll himself. Somebody had to push him. But only the Holy Ghost pushed him to come up here. Amen. Amen. I didn't do anything but be obedient to call him up. We've got to get excited about those kind of things. Why would God want to do something if we don't get excited about it? If we don't rejoice about it? Real excitement is you go tell somebody about it. Because I guarantee you, if you get a 20, 2019 brand new car, you're going to put it on Facebook. You're going to put it on every book. You're going to call people. Mom and dad, you're going to resurrect them for the dead so they can see your new car. But yet we don't do that when God shows up and does something. Please check your hearts, guys. God is wanting you to lay your life down. Because when you do, there's so much more that you're going to get. Right. Because you can't outgive God. Right. You can't outgive Him. Amen. I challenge you to try. And I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about your life. Okay. The greatest one among you will live as the one who is called to serve others. 
Verse 27, because the greatest honor is reserved for the one with the heart of a servant. For even the Son of Man did not come expecting to be served, but to serve everyone and to give His life in exchange for the salvation of many. Man, I, I thank God that He came. That He was willing to give up all of heaven so that we can be saved. Amen. You know, I was sitting next to Pastor Jesus yesterday. And many of you guys know that I like Adidas. I don't love Adidas. I like Adidas. And I've been asking God to show me an acronym for Adidas because there's so many that we used to hear. And when I'm sitting there, the Lord gives it to me. He says, all day I dream about salvation. <laughs> Put the letters together. They'll spell out Adidas. And then Adidas has the three, whatever you call them. And I said, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Pastor Jesus is going to put a t-shirt together on that one. Because that's what I dream about. That's what I live for. For people to get a revelation of the love of God. How much He loves Him. How much He cares about Him. He doesn't focus on your past. He already knows your future. Oh, somebody got to get that. Let me tell you, if God focused on your past... On mine, there's no way I'd stand before you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all of you, I don't care how old you are, all of you can say that. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, we have to understand, honor is the currency of heaven. And I process how the Navy SEALs just honor one another. How they move together. How they don't just on their own go inside a room. They tactically go in rooms. They touch each other. They give signs to one another. They know everyone's move on that team. Why? Because they're in sync. There's no eyes in that team. Everybody knows their mission. I don't try to do somebody else's mission. Or, as I put it, I don't try to walk in your lane. That's your lane. But I'm going to tell you, BB, roll running. If you're not doing what you're supposed to, I'm coming through that lane and I'm coming with fire. Can I get a witness? Because I know what we're called to do. I know what we are called to do. I know sometimes you think, well, I don't know my calling. Well, the Bible says the greatest command is to love one another. Amen. Start there. Demonstrate love. Put a smile on your face. Amen to them. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, some of y'all look like, man, like I got to cast a demon out of you. Smile. Hurt. Now, if I was to tell you, you're on camera. <laughs> like we did Sunday, people were able to ask questions, and Brother Jeff went with the camera over to, You should have seen people. You would have thought it was ABC News. <laughs> and Michael Strahan was here for Good Morning America. <laughs> My hair okay? I see bald headed people talking about my hair, okay? <laughs> Put a smile on your face, guys. I promise you, it's going to help you a whole lot. You know, we talked about honoring God. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 14. Because I'm trying to show you how God releases currency when you honor Him. Okay? And I'm going to show you somebody who was created by God, just like you and me, but didn't demonstrate honor to God and what it cost him. I'm talking about Lucifer. In verse 12 it says, How you have fallen from heaven, 
O star of the morning, light bringer. Listen, what God called them. O star of the morning, light bringer. Son of the dawn, you have been cut down to the ground. You have weakened the nations. King of Babylon. But you said in your heart. See? God knows the intent of your heart. What you're processing in your heart, God already knows it. He said, this is what Satan processed in his heart. Or Lucifer processed in his heart towards God. His Creator. I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the remote parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Look at Lucifer, Satan, and what his dishonor cost him and what was created because of his dishonor towards God. See, God had not created hell. It wasn't his intention to create hell. But all of a sudden, one of the ones closest to him purposed in his heart to dishonor God and everything he had created. Amen. So all of a sudden... God had to create a place for him and the angels that made a decision to follow him. So, I want you to think about you now and examine yourself. The last one is the one I want to focus on. I will make myself like the Most High. Have you put yourself above God? I know you might say no, but you have when He's told you to do something and you don't do it. Or when you worry. You placed yourself in a position above God. Because when you worry, now you're processing, how do I get out of this? When God's already made the way out. We don't have a right to worry. Minister Charmaine. It's illegal in heaven to worry. In soccer, when you do something wrong, Pastor Isu, they throw a card up, right? Yes, yellow or red. Yellow or red. Red is the worst, right? Yes. You're out. See, so you're today, with this, you're getting the warning card. Yellow. It's yellow. You don't want God to throw up the red one. So I challenge you today not to worry, but to trust God. In everything, He's already made a way out. But if you don't go ask Him, and you try to figure it out yourself, you just placed yourself above Him. So you're no different than Lucifer. You can say out your amen. God doesn't want His children to worry. And here's the thing, as a father, I'll ask the newest father in the house, Pastor Jesus, do you want to always provide for Ben and I? Yes, sir. Wise answer, young man. Good. Wise answer. <laughs> so I want you to process if a human man has that in him, where do you think that comes from? It comes from his spirit man. Because he's a spirit being in a human body. So if he wants to give his son the best, don't you think God wants to do the same thing for you? Yes. And he wants to give you beyond what you could ever imagine. That's right. That's right. Woo! Can you process beyond what you can imagine? I don't know. I can think big. I can think big. That's why I'm already looking at the building. Amen. 
That's why I'm already looking at a two-story building. And I know some of you are thinking, what? We, we're not even starting with the first story. That's because you, you're still stuck on the first story. I already know what God has shown me. I already know how the land's going to be prepared. We're starting to process on how to get everything done. See, some of you don't even know the phone calls I'm already getting. See, when you walk in obedience, it releases currency from heaven. When you're honoring God and doing things God's way, you don't walk in the fear of man, but in the fear of the Lord, you'll see currency released into your life. If you're struggling in an area, then begin to seek out God. Begin to honor God. Begin to give Him the first part of your day. Don't give Him the last. Give Him the first. He deserves your best. You may not look your best in the morning, but give Him your best. Open the Bible app. Don't go straight to Facebook. Don't go straight to the news on TV. Don't go straight into the shower unless you got a phone that you can operate in water. But go to God. Read His Word. Spend time with Him. I guarantee you, you'll begin to see currency released into your life. I have people that call me, text me, email me constantly. Oh, I'm sick. How many scriptures have you read on healing? Oh no, it's your job to do that for me. I tell them, you're going to remain sick. <laughs> Get some anointing oil, make sure you're sitting down, put your hands on your head, and anoint yourself. I tell you to sit down because Holy Ghost may just show up, catch you by surprise. And Minister Geraldo may not be at your house. But if you're not doing anything, why do you expect me to do it for you? If you're not willing to change, why should I do it for you? Amen. I know what God told me and I've changed my life. I know what God can do for you, but you got to be willing to change. I had a young man call me and text me. I, I, I need you. I need you. I set up three meetings and all three, he left me stranded. Like, I don't have nothing else to do. I'm sitting in my office waiting on you to show up. So he, he texts me a fourth time. I really need you bad. Guess what? I didn't even respond. Because if you're wasting my time, you're definitely wasting God's time. Amen. Well, my marriage is about... Two years ago, I thought we dealt with that. It ain't my fault you opened the door back up. Throwing a grenade in your house and running out. That ain't my fault. I gave you best counsel I could. Even Pastor Jim visited with this. What more do you need? You just got Abraham, Pastor Jim, who talked to you. And then I talk to you. What more do you need? Because apparently you're not even listening to God. He's already made a way out, but you got to trust God. You can't put all your faith in a man. Don't put your faith on me because I'm going to fail you. I guarantee you. But when you put it on God, woo-wee! There's nothing impossible with Him. And here's the deal. These Navy SEALs, they put their faith in the brother next to them. They do. That's why they're, one of their quotes is, no man left behind. But we're willing to walk away from our brothers and sisters and leave them in the mess. We're not even... Listen, like that young man, I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute, you just said this. Let me explain something to you. That doesn't mean I haven't stopped praying for him. Amen. And I continue to pray for him. 
But he's got to get revelation from somewhere because he's not getting it from me. Amen? Amen? And that's sometimes all we can do. That's why the Bible says one will plant, one will water, and God gives the increase. But you got to be willing to receive the seed in the water. And here's the deal. The seed germinates, that means it dies. It dies to itself to produce what it's been created for. Just like a, what is it, caterpillar. I know y'all might say it different. A caterpillar is one of the ugliest worms you could ever imagine. But all of a sudden, its purpose is not in staying as a caterpillar. Its purpose is to get into a cocoon, struggle in the transformation of its life to become a beautiful butterfly. But there has to be a process of dying as the ugly one to become the most beautiful one. Are we willing to be beautiful? Let me tell you, you can't hide behind your makeup. You can't. I was looking at Sam. The one I caught you though. You can't hide behind your makeup. You can't hide behind your church mask. Maybe I can't see because you're hid. But God does. There's nothing under the sun that you can hide from God. Let me talk to you about another person who was chosen by God. And his name was Moses. Well, we love Moses. Moses was chosen to lead his children into the promised land, right? Man, what an honor. Wow! You want me to lead a million people? That's the biggest church. He had a, mo he had a whole nation. And God chose somebody that was like Elmer Fudd. That's all, folks. That's who he chose. And he was doing real good. Say until. until. Numbers chapter 20. Verse 8 is where I'm going to start. This is God talking to him. Take the rod. And you and your brother Aaron. Assemble the congregation. Listen. And speak to the rock in front of them so that it will pour out its water. In this you shall bring water for them out of the rock and let the congregation and the livestock drink fresh water. See what happens is the children of Israel after being in captivity in Egypt were complaining. They, they, they were part of the whiners club. They were whining and complaining about everything. They wanted to go back to Egypt. So could you imagine the frustration of Moses? After he stood up to Pharaoh, after he did everything he did in front of the children of Israel so they could see the power of God and what God intended for them, and they still complaining? Some of them said, look, why did you take us out of Egypt? We'd rather have stayed back there. How many of us do that? Complain and whine. So I'm assuming that Moses got pretty upset. I mean, he got angry. Real angry. That's why i got to control myself. Because God is telling me to speak to you. And not hit you. <laughs> Moses chose the other. And he hit the rock. So he disobeyed God's specific instruction. Because when he hit it, the people said, oh, look what the man did. 
Instead of if he just would have spoke, they would have known that it was God. See, God wants the glory, not you. Amen? Amen. So because of him being disobedient, could you imagine this? You get to see where everybody else is going and you don't go? A whole nation. A whole generation. Let me correct that. A whole generation missed out on the promised land. Because they got focused on what a man did and not what God intended to do. Let me. Can I give you somebody else? I'm going to talk to you about everybody loves David. I know you do. Worshippers love David. Right? Well, let's talk about David. Pastor Rochelle's beloved. David was actually called a man after the heart of God. Now think about that. God calls you a man or woman after my heart. And you dishonor him. Pastor Rochelle, he dishonored God. And I'm just going to give you the scriptures that you can go and I hope you read your Bible. 2 Samuel chapter 11 verses 2 through 5. David committed adultery with Bathsheba. In verses 6 through 13, David attempts to cover up Bathsheba's pregnancy. In verses 14 through 27, David conspires to kill Uriah. Now remember, this is a man after God's heart. I don't know about y'all, that doesn't sound like God's heart. Can I get a witness? In chapter 12 of 2 Samuel, verse 1, here's the awesome thing. The prophet Nathan tells David a story about a poor man, and a poor man represented Uriah with one lamb, Bathsheba. And the rich man, David, that had a large number of sheep and cattle, meaning the king had everything, taking that one lamb from the poor man. 15 through 25 tells you David's son by Bathsheba dies. So not only did he commit adultery, he committed murder. Right? Not only one murder, but two. He killed Uriah, and because of his disobedience, a man who was after the heart of God killed a baby, killed the next legacy that he was supposed to have. This is just some of the leaders that dishonored God, and it cost him something. But honoring God gave them the currency of heaven, and God still used them. God still demonstrated currency of mercy. Amen? Amen? Now let's talk about one man. One man that honored God from day one. No matter what happened in his life, he always honored God first. Can you say honor? Honor. In Mark chapter 16, verse 29, it says this, And after saying these things, Jesus lifted up, lifted up into heaven and sat down at the right place of honor at the right hand of God. Jesus honored God. For 33 and a half years, He wasn't disobedient in any shape, form, or fashion to God. And God demonstrated the currency that he received because of that. He not only sat him in heavenly places, but he sat him at his right hand, right next to him. And guess what Jesus got to do and still is doing? He's talking in the ear of God about you and me. 
is interceding for you and me. When God is ready to take you out, like He did back in the Old Testament, Jesus says, no way, Daddy. Daddy, remember what I did? It was for their disobedience. Daddy, hold on. See, we have a perception that, that Jesus is coming back and He's coming back as a loving baby in a manger. You heard it in today's song. He's coming back for war. He's coming back with a sword in His hand. He already has blood on His robe because He's coming back to do battle for His loved ones. You need to understand that, that Jesus loves you and His love is unconditional. It's a love called agape. Why would you want to not honor Him for what He did on the cross? Why would we choose to dishonor Him and live a life that doesn't please God? Guys, I'm trying to tell you, it's time that we die to ourselves. It's time that we say, we want to honor you, God, and we want to lay on that grenade. We want to take it for the team. I want to honor you, God, in what you've called me to do. I don't want to dishonor you anymore. I want to fulfill what you've given me to do. If you turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, many of you should be able to quote this even while you're sleeping and snoring at the same time. It says, but first and most importantly, that's a mandatory thing. It has to be the most important thing in your life. It has to be more important than your husband, your job, your wife, your children. It says to seek, to aim at, strive after His kingdom. Whatever is happening in the kingdom, we should be seeking after it. We should be demonstrating the kingdom everywhere you go. And let me tell you, in the kingdom, there's no such thing as being shy. There's no such thing as being ashamed. There's no such thing as God... Wait a minute. No. In the kingdom, orders are given and things happen. Shifting happens. We've got to get to that place that we seek the kingdom to fulfill the heart of God. And it says, not only just seek Him, but also to seek His righteousness. That means His way of doing things and being right. Not right in the eyes of man but right in the eyes of God. Amen. Doing it exactly the way He wants it done. Because when you don't choose, I remember when I was away from the Lord for one year, literally away from God. I didn't even pray over my food. My father-in-law said this to me. He said, Ray, I need you to understand this. He said, because you're not serving God, there's many young people today that are splitting hell wide open because you're not doing your call. I question you this morning. How many people are splitting hell wide open because you're the one that has the voice of the kingdom to change their life and cause them to run to God? Check yourself as you stand to your feet. See, we need to get an understanding that when you do this, the attitude and character of God, everything will be added onto your life. When you give up everything, you'll gain everything. Listen to that. When you give up everything, you'll gain everything. See, you have to understand something. God is calling you to give up everything that you perceive as important. Because anything that you put above God is your God. 